Okay, and welcome to You Look Good With A Cat Head. This is a, a talk about our experiences making a multi-user local mixed reality experience using Magic Leap and Unity. Uh, my name is Thomas Hall. I'm a senior programmer with Magic Leap, and we've been working with Weta Game Drop to put this together. All right, so a brief overview of what we're, I'm going to discuss today. We're going to start with a brief demo, Wi-Fi gods uh, permitting. And then we are, I'm going to briefly discuss the network requirements for making an experience along these, these lines. I'm going to discuss our strategies for aligning virtual content across multiple devices. I'm going to discuss the benefits of supporting multiple uh, cross-platform play on a multi-user uh, experience such as Grow Battle. And we have a brief time for questions at the end. I should mention that uh, Grow Battle is the multi-user experience uh, prototype that's currently uh, demoing in the, uh, ex the, the booth over there. All right, so I'm going to switch to a, a live demo now. This is the Unity editor. Uh, and I'm going to invite my two colleagues there to uh, attempt to join this game. Yes, please. You can now see a representation of my two colleagues. Cord Battle uses eye tracking and blink tracking. We also listen to the microphone and use that to drive the mo motion of the mouth. Can I get you both to uh, scan this image tracker? What that's going to allow me to do. I've also got this uh, Android device. Oops. All right, so now we've attached that virtual content to the uh, user's head. You can see that one of them has a teapot. Yes, please. Oh, right. They're allowed to select their preferred character. That one is called Gimbal. And this is Lord Cocktwain on the other side. <laughs> so this is alignment. We use the image tracker to facilitate alignment between the platforms. Yep. Uh, while I'm here, I'll just uh, use some hacks to become a character with a gun. And I can now shoot the character shoot the, uh, my hapless victims from the comfort of my phone. Uh, one last thing I'd like to demonstrate as part of this. The PC is also a spectator, and we have several spectator options. I can view the virtual content from the point of view of both characters, and I can also use a split screen to see all of the viewpoints at once. All right, I'm going to press, press the play button and the game will stop. Sorry, guys. Thank you, assistance. <laughs> so what are the network requirements for putting something like Broad Battle together? Well, the number one problem you're going to encounter is latency. Uh, sort of unique to local uh, augment oh, sorry, mixed reality and augmented reality experiences. Latency is crucial for content that's actually stuck to visible parts of humans such as their heads and their controls. So it has to be kept to an absolute minimum. Our experiments indicate that about 40 milliseconds is the upper limit, but above that you're going to start seeing some swim and you're gonna, it's going to break the illusion pretty hard pretty quickly. Ideally you want to keep your, your latency down to more like 10 to 20 milliseconds. Uh, some strategies that are usually deployed for dealing with latency are in interpolation and extrapolation, commonly used on online multiplayer games. They're actually uh, not so useful when you're doing local mixed reality uh, multiplayer experiences like this. It's generally just going to result in latency. You're going to see your content dr drifting behind the real world. So 
one of the first things we did was try to uh, reduce interpolation for the network solution that we're using to an absolute minimum. Extrapolation, on the other hand, can be useful, but purely in bad network environment conditions. When you're dropping packets, when latency is an issue, you can cover up some of that using extrapolation. We generally find that you only want to activate extrapolation in those situations and deactivate it again once your, uh, your network conditions improve. Uh, we generally send positions and rotations absolutely as fast as we can, so the same frame rate that we render at, that it guarantees that you're going to get uh, content locked as much as possible. Uh, one aside to that is that sending so many packets all at once is sort of counter to a lot of online multiplayer philosophies, um, and it can actually result in network saturation. So we recommend combining packets. We generally only send a single packet per player, uh, per frame, just to avoid issues where packets get delayed because they're backed up. How do we align virtual content across multiple devices? Uh, there's several strategies you can use. But first, I want to describe just how uh, accurate we're talking about. For the purposes of broad battle, so a mixed reality experience over the range of, say, you know, 5 to 10 meters, we think that 3 centimeters at 5 meters is accurate enough. Um, we use slightly oversized heads uh, to disguise any uh, alignment issues, but generally, we, we find that we achieve that. Uh, one of the alignment strategies we've, we use is image tracking, as we demonstrated there. It's well supported on most platforms that also support augmented, augmented reality and mixed reality. But the downside to that is you do need some sort of uh, image to scan, be it on a printout like I've got here, or on a, a mobile phone. Uh, so there's going to be a bit more setup or hardware required. We have determined that uh, well, our experiments using multiple images have determined that you can get better accuracy if you place and uh, use multiple images, two images or three. Uh, we generally use three images to get the absolute um, optimal uh, alignment. They usually spread several meters apart, so we can also you know, use the relationship between the images uh, to uh, improve rotational accuracy. Uh, the other strategy is coordinated interaction. For example, all the users point at the same uh, world position at the same time, or they align their, their controls. This is more time consuming, but you can make it part of the experience, potentially. Another option uh, that we use in broad battle is synchronized cloud-backed PCF spatial anchors. Uh, PCFs, uh, or persistent coordinate frames, are the official platform spatial anchors for Magic Leap. The API for accessing PCFs has been available in the Lumen SDK as part of the initial Magic Leap 1 launch. The cloud backend, allowing usage of PCFs at large scale, will be available in the SDK update 0.95. So deployment of cloud-backed PCF spatial anchors will start with the 095 software release. Uh, as I said, they're already available, and we find PCFs very useful. In uh, Dr. Uh, Grobots Invaders, for example, we, uh, we can grab a spatial anchor or a PCF and make sure that it's, um, uh, sorry, they, uh, they have a unique ID, so we can use them to identify which landscape you're in. We can make sure that con virtual content is restored to the same location between boots um, and between launches of the application. And using the cloud back uh, PCFs, They'll also synchronize across devices in the same location, which means that uh, when the devices are online, the cloud will facilitate nearly instant automatic alignment. And as I said uh, previously, they will be available in the 0.95 update for general developers. Bridging between platforms, we use the image tracking for now until there's a solution that is uh, unified across all platforms. So what are the benefits of supporting cross-platform play like we do with Broad Battle? Use supporting PC, Android, iPhone, and Magic Leap 1. Now, all, pla all platforms can perform all roles. Anyone on the platform can be this, uh, on any platform can be the server, the host, or the client. We're, and I can't tell you, we've used that feature many times for many different situations where, for example, uh, it makes more sense to have a, a phone being the server or makes it more sense for one of the Magic Leap devices to be the server. That flexibility is very useful. 
also makes it very easy to set up spectators and fix camera views, for example, for uh, people to get an outside view of the action. Uh, spectating via multiplayer uh, doesn't impact the gameplay of active users the same way that, for example, trying to stream a camera feed from a device potentially could. And it's very useful for QA, user testing, and demos. And from experience, showing this, uh, this demo to people, they've generally reacted with, how can we have this in, uh, in our experience, even if it's just a single player experience, they, they, the benefits of being able to have multiple spectators for QA, for demos, and so forth is just uh, very compelling. All right, that's a wrap. Questions? Uh, one second. Uh, microphone. You mentioned three centimeters at five meters. Um, what impact did the multiplayer part of that have? Like, what kind of fidelity could you get if you weren't going over a network at all? In terms of alignment? Uh, well, I guess the, the networking side of things doesn't really impact the, uh, isn't really affected by the alignment so much. It's really just when you look at a stationary object, is it aligned? It, it's not so much when it's moving. Um, so, yeah, does that answer your question? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? What is the maximum uh, distance that the play space can occur in? We're, as, a, as a prototype, we haven't actually uh, experimented with that yet, uh, but uh, the, I guess the largest play space we've tried is our, our office, which is uh, many meters wide. Uh, I guess uh, when you go beyond a certain point, alignment is going to become a much bigger factor. Um, so we generally, we've restricted our experiments to more like a, a, a 10 meter by 10 meter zone just to try and get it uh, optimized for that. Okay. And do you have any recommendations for if the headset loses head pose, how might, like if you've gone too far away or the headset has to reset its spatial orientation relative to the markers? Um, Uh, I can speak in, in terms of image tracking, you, you, we can just uh, uh, recommend the user to re, uh, go through the, through the images again. Uh, in terms of a PCF, they should re, be regained once head pose is regained and you get back into the original landscape. So I guess the recommendation would be return the player to the original land, uh, the starting zone and, and, and hold tight. Okay, thank you. Uh, any further questions? All right, thank you, that's it. <laughs>